This is Listing Impossible. I'm asking you to trust me off of my word, but off of what I've done. Construction is the bottleneck. Aaron has the number one luxury real estate team in the country, but staying on top is an endless hustle. Look, I know you want to do it quietly. I know you want to do it off market. Sometimes he likes to inspire his agents by taking them to the listings of their dreams. And today, it's The Mountain, a residential property Aaron has just brought to market at a price of $1 billion. Downtown. Wow. It's amazing. Wow. Very nice. We feel like this is a representation of who we are and uh, where we want to be. And it's pretty much literally the top of not only the food chain in real estate, but the top of Beverly Hills. What's so, the commission on this, Aaron, if we sell this thing? Uh, you know, I never count my commission. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a buyer, yeah. we'll Especially figure it out real quick. <laughs> yeah, right. Morgan has been with me for about a year. He's great with people. He's great with sales. He's this ex pro NFL player. He's super successful, both in life and in real estate. But I think it could be so much bigger. I'm super proud of you because you're killing it. Like you're doing super well. You're one of my top you. and you have your thing going. Sure. And, and, and I can't criticize it too much, but I can because I hate the way you're doing I, I, it. I, I, I get it. I feel like you're doing it all so quiet. Sure. Morgan is considered the pocket king because that's the way he set up his business. A pocket listing is a listing that does not officially hit the market. So it's not on multiple listing services. Oftentimes it's not advertised. He saves money from not marketing the property. But in saving money, he's not advertising the property to the global marketplace, and he's certainly not getting his name out there. And it drives me crazy because I believe that the way to sell real estate is to market, to advertise, to expose, and in turn it helps us to build our own businesses at the same time. You're almost out of business yeah. if, you're, if your name isn't on properties because people don't know what you're doing. So when right. it sells, it comes and goes. Right. I would love to transition him into an agent that takes all those pockets and turns them into listings. Imagine if you started actually listing houses. Right. Yeah. All of a sudden, buyers are going to come to you. Sellers are going to come to you. It's funny because with, you know, with football and always being in the lights, I kind of got to real estate and said, you know what, I'm going to do things quietly, you know, and just kind of go about my business. But I got to use that same mentality and take it to real estate. So, Man. you know, you're right. The NFL and real estate, there's similarities between the two. After a game, you're like, I can't believe I'm doing this. My body hurts. Then you look in your bank account. You're like, I think I can do it another week. You know, and it's the same thing in real estate. Like you deal with very tough sellers. Like, this is impossible. And then you close it and you feel good and you get paid. And you're like, you know what, I think I'm going to sell another house. So with different pains, but both hurt. Today, Aaron and Nisha are flying up to Northern California's Napa Valley to meet with the owners of an estate there. It's a relationship with some history. I can't believe we are back here at the Butler's. I know, well, it's funny because like every good or bad ex-boyfriend, they want you back. I mean, us and the butlers is pretty much like a love-hate relationship. 80% love. They hate love. you a little bit. Uh, I would say they hate us equally. I absolutely hate the $100 ceiling lamp that you can get from Costco. It's 200. He's like. <laughs> the butlers might have been one of my most frustrating clients. They enlisted with us three years ago. Fake orchids. Rich people live rich. I was like, you're an ass You guys have a problem. We think you're probably about a million dollars too high. I, I totally disagree. We got fired. I think it's really funny that they embraced having us come back. When a house doesn't sell, people think that they can do better. And that once they try to do better, they always end up coming back to us. Right. It's a super challenging property. There's this gorgeous house that just fits that Napa lifestyle but they're also selling a vineyard at the same time. It's currently listed at 19 million for the house and 19.8 million for the vineyard. This property has been on and off the market for five years. There's a lot of moving parts to this property between the business and the house, and more importantly, the butlers. Look at the fake flowers, they're still here. Hey. I see fake, are those real? 
Those are real. Those are real. Oh my God, they listened to at least something we said. Oh no, God. not too much. I'm Perry, and this is my wife, Carolyn. Uh, also, Lord and Lady Butler from the Manor of Maiden Court. We met in London. I was a very successful playboy, uh, doing very nicely, thank you very much. And then I met this lady. We had drinks on a Monday. Tuesday, I took her out for dinner. Which was nice. And then Wednesday, she moved in. And Hello. here we are, 35 years later, still in love. Very much in love. Yeah. You have so many great elements of your house, like the fireplace gorgeous. is amazing. Gorgeous. Could you repeat that, sir? The fireplace is gorgeous. Thank you. It's 12,000 square feet, seven bedrooms, five bathrooms. Having the master on the ground floor is a great selling point, right? Love it. Right. Yeah. Love it. And buyers love it. Even at my age, I love not having to climb upstairs. I had a very successful technology business, which we sold. And we decided that we wanted to get into the wine business. And we wanted a beautiful home overlooking uh, Napa Valley. And this was a, our dream home. We raised our daughter Justine here and created a very successful wine business. So right now the house and the winery, they're listed separately. I planted every single one of those vines. I walk them every single day. It's my baby. We're on our 20th year, and we're established across the country. Whoever buys us actually gets that license. But we want it to go to the right home. And to me, that's really important. One of the reasons we love you guys is that you guys are quirky and fabulous. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why we don't love you is you, you don't listen to us. I hated this library three years ago, and I hate it even more today. Do you remember we said a lot of clutter doesn't work well for selling homes? Kind of. Doesn't English heritage matter? This is typical of what you see in an English mansion. Collecting crap in your bookshelf isn't a British thing. It's a hoarder thing. We do respect English heritage, but the cobra and the mongoose need to go. This room is like a disaster. I've never seen a smaller room with, with more fish thank on the you. walls. Thank you, Perry. It's actually a big room. The fish are just huge. <laughs> you guys do have some nice things in this house, That's but so this nice fish is definitely not one of them. Well, he thought he was. How would you feel about taking the fish down? I'd have to think about it. What was this room supposed to be? This was the dining room. And now the dining room is elsewhere because I could only get eight people around this table. I see a piano in the middle of a room. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be a dining room. That's all I say. It's smack dead in the middle of your room. I think that this logistical space right now is not making sense. The way that this has it configured, you have an entry room with this huge dining room table on a room that's massive, which was important for you. Right. For most buyers, this is supposed to be the living room. I just think for entertaining, if somebody's a lifestyle buyer, they want this. The layout in this house makes zero sense. They put things in the wrong rooms on purpose and they defend those choices. Let's go outside. Ooh. I know it sounds stupid, but even the doorbell's falling. I know, like, it's bad. Like that? It, it works, that, watch. Guys. See? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're asking $19 million for this house. Look, it's wireless. <laughs> <laughs> the view is amazing. Gorgeous. This is like a multi, multi, multi-million dollar view, but the pool is looking sad, actually. Oh, don't hurt its feelings. Well, it just looks super dirty. You know, it's actually, it's not. We have one chance to make a first impression, and this is not good. How long have you guys been trying to sell this house? On and off over five years. On, On and, and off. off for five years. On and off and for five years. And then really got serious about a year ago. I think it happened when we knew that Perry was well and better. After five years, Perry beat cancer. 
And it was almost like the house was taking care of us. And we didn't, we didn't want to let go of the house. But here I am and I'm alive. And so we're ready to move on to new pastures, right? Yeah. A new stage of our life. And I think the person that moves here, they're going to find the happiness we've had for the last 20 years. It's, it's just beautiful. <laughs>